we were wrapping up the interview and I was like, oh my God, am I gonna make it through a final interview with no technical questions? So if you watched my last video about how I got an internship in aerospace with Northrop Grumman as a software engineering intern, I mentioned how I struggled finding quote unquote big N internships. I feel like there's a misconception among computer science students or aspiring software engineers that in order to get into these big tech companies, you either have to have had a past internship, which we all know is really competitive in general or have to graduate from a top tier CS university. Now going to Stanford or having a prior internship with Google or Microsoft definitely won't hurt your chances. I'm here to show you that despite what people may think, you don't have to be a savant elite genius programmer in order to land an awesome job. So how did I first get into the Microsoft recruiting pipeline? So just a little quick background around me. I just recently graduated from UC San Diego with a degree in math and computer science and a minor in entrepreneurship and innovation. And in my last video, I also mentioned how I had software development internships in the Department of Justice and at Northrop Grumman. So towards the end of my internship at Northrop Grumman, a recruiter from Microsoft reached out to me on LinkedIn and she invited me to a cleared Microsoft recruiting event. So one day after my internship, I head down to, I think it was like a cheesecake factory and I got to talk to recruiters, hiring managers and engineers about what they do, what positions they're looking for. And it was really just a great time. I also got some free merch, which again is always a bonus. And I also made sure to connect with those people on LinkedIn so I would just have more points of contact. So the event was in early August 2019 for when I was going into my senior year at university, but I was actually going to study abroad in September, so the next month in Edinburgh, Scotland, and I was actually really worried that doing this would sort of disqualify me from potentially interviewing further with Microsoft. But after some brief phone calls and email exchanges, we scheduled sort of a final interview. And the interview was gonna be via Microsoft Teams because they were not about to fly me from Scotland to Seattle and then back. Because of the time change, I think the interview was around 6 or 7 p.m. Pretty much up until that point, since when I found out I was gonna be having a final interview, I had been studying lead code and different interview questions so that I could be more prepared. So like Western Digital that I mentioned in my last video, there was about four interviews, pretty much each ranging from 45 minutes to an hour. So most of the questions to my surprise were mostly around my past experiences, certain technical knowledge that I had, no, no like specific whiteboarding questions, but more like probing on different technologies that I was familiar with and what areas I could potentially go into at the company and what areas I had past experience in. And that was pretty much my first three interviews. So I finally get to my last interview, still no exact whiteboarding questions. Now there were obviously technical conversations, but no like, hey, code this for me. So the fourth interview went along pretty much the same as the other three. And it was basically all these different technical managers, hiring managers in different aspects at Microsoft talking about potential opportunities as well as seeing what sort of technologies that I'm familiar with. And again, up until this point, I had been studying lead code and interview questions, and I even bought a whiteboard because I didn't know if they were gonna want me to actually write on a whiteboard or code it in front of them. And all this while studying abroad and taking foreign classes. So. We were wrapping up the interview and I was like, oh my God, am I gonna make it through a final interview with no technical questions? But then, but then he mentioned, he said, oh, by the way, have you had any like technical or coding interviews yet? And I was like, oh, so close. So I said, no, I hadn't had any specific whiteboarding or coding interviews yet. And he said, all right, we'll have to schedule one of those. So we wrapped up the interview and I think we scheduled the technical interview for a couple days later. So the technical interview day rolls around and I was extremely nervous. Like at Western Digital that I mentioned in my last video, I decided to code in C++ syntax, I think. Python probably would have been easier, but uh, you live and you learn. They didn't actually ask me to code in an IDE, so I didn't actually have to make sure it ran. It was more of just in a text editor. I don't think I'm actually allowed to say the exact question they asked me, but it's more of a sorting focused question. And I would definitely say it would be close to a, a hard level lead code question, if you could even find it on lead code. I had never really encountered a, a question quite like this 
in my uh, experience studying. And I think a lot of companies are sort of moving away from lead code memorization type questions and more problem solving bigger questions. So I remember the question actually being really difficult and I actually had a pretty hard time with it. And on multiple occasions, I actually asked the interviewer, uh, hey, is this the right answer? And pretty much every time he's like, hey, why don't you check it again? Because I just kept missing very small things. The whole technical interview was allotted for about an hour and we reached the about 20 to 30 minute mark. And at that point I had reached the non-optimal solution. Definitely did not have the best time complexity, uh, but it did solve the problem. The interviewer then explained the optimal solution because I guess the that 30 minute time window was all that they were really planning on using for the technical question. It was just one question. And then we followed up with just a sort of regular Q and A type session. Now, although I didn't get the optimal solution in the fastest time, what I do think I did well was explaining my thought process. And this is what I wanna stress to you guys is that in a realistic scenario, you'll be able to look up syntax or certain bugs on Stack Overflow, but problem solving is a key trait regardless of your career, but very much important in software engineering and project management. I think having the ability to think creatively and approach problems in a certain way, as well as articulate how you got to that solution is very vital. And I think a lot of big tech companies are moving more towards how does this person actually think versus how can they memorize the solution to a leak code question? And again, no one really works in a vacuum, so this memorization is not gonna be super practical in most work scenarios. Nevertheless, I finished the interview and felt terrible. I feel like I did everything wrong. I felt like I asked the interviewer all the times, like, was this correct? And then him saying, no, check it over again. I didn't get the optimal solution in the allotted amount of time. I actually began looking for other opportunities because I actually thought I just failed this last technical interview. I sent thank you messages to all the recruiters and all the engineers and hiring managers that I had talked to, thanking them for their support. And I wanna say maybe three weeks later, I actually got an email confirmation saying that I would be receiving an offer. Despite feeling like I did absolutely terrible, what do I think I did well? I think my four behavioral interviews went extremely well. And I was able to show that despite not having very, very detailed knowledge in uh, specific niche areas of certain technologies that I could still hold my weight in technical conversations. And in terms of the technical interview, I definitely didn't do perfect as I mentioned, but again, I think I explained how I approach problems well and articulated that clearly. And I think just this gave me some extra points too. So I want to stress to you all that yes, technical interviews and interviews in general can be very nerve wracking and you should definitely prepare for them. As I mentioned in my last video, I studied a lot for my Western digital interview and never received an offer for it. But I also wanna to stress to you that you don't have to be perfect and get the perfect solution to actually land an awesome job at an awesome company. Now, I was originally supposed to be coming into Microsoft as a pure software engineer, but a couple months before actually starting, my now current manager emailed me about a potential program manager opportunity. I don't really know what a program manager did, but he explained the responsibilities and how he envisioned the program manager on his team, but he ultimately left it up to me whether I wanted to stay as a software engineer or come in as a program manager. One of the big things he mentioned was how I would still be doing software development work, which was really important to me because my degree was obviously in math and computer science, so I like software engineering and building things, but I also like having that more macro level perspective over different projects. So after some contemplation, I decided to accept the program manager role, and that brings us to now. I am a program manager at Microsoft, but don't worry, I still code and I still read documentation. So I like to say like a technical program manager because I think it encapsulates a little bit about more what I do. But I hope you guys like the video and I hope that could shed some light about potentially different pipelines on getting into big tech companies. Some important things to remember, I think, explaining your solutions to technical questions clearly and articulate your thought process well. And that includes not only, you know, post solution, but also during the solution about, okay, even if you don't think it's right, just, start verbalizing, just be like, okay, here is the problem. This is what I needed to do. Maybe if I approach it like this, I think that could definitely help you uh, and help the interviewer understand how you're approaching problems. If you didn't get a chance to check out my last video about how I got an internship in aerospace, go check that out. I talk a little bit about 
uh, selection bias and how it's important to consider not only the big tech internships, but also pretty much any company could use a software engineering intern. And finding an internship is really hard even further so nowadays. But I hope you guys liked the video. My name is Michael or Mikey, whatever you want to call me. Tune in to future videos of mine. And if you have any suggestions, consider commenting them down below. Hopefully see you guys next time. Bye-bye.